And now, your go-to source for year-round fantasy hockey advice, DFS, and betting coverage. This is NHL Fantasy on Ice, presented by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL. Old school hockey at the Garden on Wednesday night. If you're in a Pims League, you're feeling pretty damn good in your fantasy playoff matchup right now. Brought to you by good friends over at Skip. It's time for another edition of NHL Fantasy on Ice. Week 25, mailbag edition. Nick Alberga, Pete Jensen, and Anna Dew with you. What's going on, Pete? What's up, everybody? Skip the official food delivery app of the NHL. And yeah, I'm looking forward to personally Tomas Hurdle if he debuts for the Golden Knights later in the week. We could spin that towards the fantasy playoffs, Anna, or we could even look ahead and see like what his value and ranking might be next season. We're at that time of the year, guys, where we're talking about <laughs> what players are coming back for the Vegas Golden Knights, and that's how you know that playoffs are just around the corner, Nick. Hey, I, I saw a screen grab first and foremost from Wednesday. Somebody had a couple different Devils and Rangers, and they're in a league that has Pims still, and they had 30 Pims already. So congratulations wow. to you for just uh, getting every enforcer possible. But that, that was an electric start. Um, rest assured, as Anna mentioned, it's not an electric time of the fantasy season, but we'll answer some of your questions here. I got a lot of futures looks over the next couple weeks as well as we get set for the Stanley Cup playoffs and your playoff pools. But there's still a lot of people out there, Pete, trying to win their fantasy titles. And I, I like the fact that you bring up Tomas Hurdle because this is a guy you can pluck off the, uh, the waiver wire right now and he could bring home a title for you. Right. And he's been a 70 point player in the past for the Sharks and was really productive for them earlier in the season. Anna, they got nobody left on the roster. Maybe Michael Granlin's about it that you would even consider in fantasy from San Jose. But yeah, as far as Vegas and his upside there, really nice one two punch when it's Eichel on the first line. And even without Mark Stone, right? March is so's 30 goal scorer this year. And then nice secondary option there and first power play guy in hurdle moving forward. Yeah, I love how you gave a shout out to the San Jose Sharks as if there's <laughs> any hope left for that in the season. Perhaps one of the last times we mentioned them on the Fantasy on Ice <laughs> podcast for this season, guys. But the Vegas Golden Knights are like a sneaky team where I feel like even for short term streaming option, if you're playing daily fantasy, looking at specific props for the night with Hurdle back, obviously that's a big boost. But other guys like Barbashev have stepped up. Even Anthony Mantha is a guy who has been intriguing for me. So I don't know. I feel like Vegas is a lot of good spots, Nick. I'm uh, forever lurking on social media. First and foremost, there was somebody a little disappointed that we haven't brought up Michael Granlin requesting why and asking why he's not in the top 100 of your lists over at NHL.com slash fantasy. So I like that we brought him up. Uh, was it Pete Jensen? Skip- no, it wasn't Pete Jensen. It, w- it was an outside uh, observer. Somebody who listens to this podcast was very, very distressed and unhappy. So that's why we're there for some therapy. Uh, back to Hurdle. I- I'm curious to see where he fits in this lineup, right? Um, normally, I would take a wait-and-see approach because this is a, obviously a prolific name coming from a cellar dweller, hasn't played in a while since like February, has a surgery. Where does he fit in, Pete? Is it with Eichel? Is it with Stevenson? Does he play the wing? Does he play up the middle? I guess it gives them uh, a lot of different looks they can potentially play here. Well, I mean, it definitely puts William Carlson back into that 3C hole, Anna, and he was super productive for them in the playoffs last year, even early on this season when they were dealing with an injury to Eichel and across the lineup at different times. So, yeah, I'm excited about what William Carlson can do uh, now that he's bumped down into like a more appropriate role and just super productive regardless of lineup placement for that guy. Who and has the rotary phone going off right now? <laughs> is that is that the Nick? Dial Who's up. calling on the rotary phone? Fire alarm testing in the building, oh. so we're going to mute as you guys discuss Tomas Hurdle. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead, Anna. I'm used to it at this point. It's not my fault, guys, for once. No bidet issues over here. But I feel like when we're looking at teams that are really successful and like teams that I'm targeting right now, like the Carolina Hurricanes, you see that they have these lines that they roll out and they have the depth that they need. And Vegas is doing that too. Like William Carlson on the third line, that's huge for this team. And they may, it makes them more competitive. Like you don't want them to be too top heavy, Nick, because as bad as it sounds like Vegas wasn't the strongest regular season team, there was a chance they're not making the postseason. all of this storylines heading into the playoffs. But we know once they get there and they reevaluate, they get hurdled back all of a sudden they could easily make it back to the cup final. Yeah, we're seeing uh, statement victories left and right this week in the NHL, namely that one Vegas and the Vancouver Canucks. And maybe this is just all about uh, L.A.'s plan not to play Edmonton in the first round. I tell you, if it's Edmonton-Vegas, 
I don't know which way I'm going to lean in that series. That's going to be a tough matchup for the Oilers, tough matchup for Vegas. But you add Hurdle into the mix, it's a, it's a much different looking Vegas team. But there are some question marks with that team this year, Pete. There are, but there were question marks a couple of weeks ago with the Dallas Stars, and now that team oh, is man. just romping teams left and right. And Jake Ottinger has gotten me and our Fantasy on Ice League two shutouts in the past week or so. Uh, so I'm rolling. I'm, I'm charging at you, Nick. I got some, <laughs> some, I got some room to make up Pete, here, but my please. team's getting hot here. So anyway, Chris Tanev, uh, a bit of an injury scare the other day, but he's okay. He came back. He was plus two in the big 5 nothing win against Edmonton yesterday. And also, like, that's just a team I feel like Dallas, Anna, you just want to tap into them any way you can. Stan Coven, still really low roster percentage. I love uh, Duchesne. I love Jamie. Jamie Ben's like one of the hottest players in the whole league right now. Uh, Nick's apartment is really excited about the Dallas Stars as well, guys. <laughs> a little extra sound effects over there. Wyatt Johnston, too, is another player that I just want to shout out because everyone knows at this point, we've talked about him so much on the podcast, how talented he is, specifically looking ahead to keeper leagues because we're at that point of the season. But I don't think we've said enough the fact that this kid is literally 20 years old and he's a 30 goal scorer, Nick. Like, that is a huge feat. Yeah, and, and there's just so many guys. By the way, it's done, so we could all breathe uh, better today, producer <laughs> good, Bobby. Good. That the uh, fire drill is done. I was fearing for my life Thank there a God. bit, but uh, not fearing for the Dallas Stars. Um, I think to your point, Anna. There's just there's so many weapons, right? And I, I you know, weirdly enough, I think with Dallas, uh, even from a fantasy standpoint, like the goaltending hasn't been great, and that's why it's pretty uh, amazing that we sit here have this conversation on this Thursday with like two and a half weeks left. And they're in the pole position for the President's Trophy. Like, it's remarkable just the depth that they possess, Pete. And I think people are sleeping on the Dallas Stars, which is crazy to say. Uh, but even look at their deadline. They didn't go crazy. And obviously, the Stankoven recall well, was huge. Like, the vets have played well, too. Like, we talked about Matt Duchesne and how, you know, emotional, unhappy he was. The buyout happening in Nashville. He's been a perfect fit with the Dallas Stars, too. He has for sure. And we liked those new wrinkles they had coming into the year. Now plus Tanev, Sagan's back from injury as well. He's had a nice little season, was carrying them at even strength when the top guns like Hints and Robertson were a little slow starting and a little inconsistent at points. But Dallas going into the playoffs, you know, as hot as they've been all year. And that's a great sign for their Stanley Cup futures appeal. One team I'm a little worried about, I know you mentioned it, Nick, on the Action Network collab. Go back and listen to that. We recorded it on Wednesday. It's still very relevant heading into these big games on Thursday and Friday this week. Carter Verhage now deemed week to week for the Florida Panthers may not return until the postseason, Anna. That's a bit of a concern for anybody in the fantasy oh playoffs. He's a top 25 overall player this year. And he's always a player that pops off for the Florida Panthers, specifically in the postseason. So if you're looking ahead and looking at some futures picks, you never know. But at the end of the day, they've rallied with much worse. So it's a hit, but True. Florida's still Florida, Nick. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'd rather be hot than not going into the playoffs. Like, I think it's ironic that last year we're at, having this conversation at this time and, and Florida's picking up steam and now they're on a cooler. So you mentioned it. They lose for Haggy. They lost Ekblad against the Montreal Canadiens. There are way more question marks surrounding that team right now. We talked about Spencer Knight. Does he factor into the equation at some point in time? He's been on fire, but I guess producer Bobby is not buying this. No, this is just how quickly the NHL changes, right? I mean, a few weeks <laughs> ago, we had Paul Maurice on at the rink. They were the hottest team in the league. They, they were unstoppable. They <laughs> were the team that no one was going to be able to beat. A couple weeks later, now that team is Dallas. I don't know. I trust Florida in the playoffs. I think it's tough for players to get up, right, late in the season, the way they play. I know they have some injuries, but it's difficult to find that motivation when you're talking about – Last year, they were trying to get into the playoffs. This year, it's a matter of seeding, and, and they just went on a deep run last year. Really difficult for Kachuk and the boys to get all fired up about moving up one spot in the playoff rankings compared to last year when they needed to win. And I think, you know, the Blackhawks needed to beat Pittsburgh, right, for them yeah. to get in. So I'm not worried about the Panthers, Nick. Just had to say this, too, like a little tidbit, because – no one's worried. No one should be worried. Every single team in the NHL that's gone on a crazy win streak and a crazy run has literally lost half of their next like series of games. That's happened every single time. It happened with New York, happened with every single team. So I'm not worried about Florida. This is just the way hockey goes. You can't win forever.
You can't. You can't. You're going to go through your ups and downs, and certainly I'm right there with you guys. But uh, statistics are statistics. They're 4-8-1 and one since acquiring Vladimir Tarasenko, 4-7-1 and one since the trade deadline. Uh, I want to give a shout-out to, uh, A, the advice that we've given at Bits and Pieces throughout this season. Remember when we told people to stash Andre Vasilevsky? Well, this is big. It's reaping benefits for fantasy owners right now because this guy's on a different planet, guys. Since the trade deadline, 8-1-1, and one, Anna, a 2.01 and 930 one shutout. Again, you look like a genius if you stash this guy, and we can throw this into a, qu- a question delivered by our good friends over at Skip. Andre Vasilevsky, in your mind, uh, because of his play as of late, is he a top five fantasy goalie going into next season? I'm done doubting him. You know, I thought this was the year that Tampa was going to regress a little bit. For me, Tampa Bay is what the Boston Bruins are for you, Nick, because I was doubting them. I was like, the dynasty's done. It's over. Andre Vasilevsky hasn't looked like himself last season. And then he proved me wrong, rightfully so. I would say he's a top five fantasy goalie heading into next year. He's showcased that he can be. And our good friend Pete Jensen heard us hyping up Andre Vasilevsky instead of Jonas Johansson. And so he had to, he had to hop out for a little bit to defend his boy. Yeah, he's out of here. He's out of here. But, like, that's the big story for me and and fatigue this time of year. Like, it's Vassy every game. Like, I I know we sort of prodded at Pete a bit earlier on in the year how they felt about Jonas Johansson, but it's crystal clear. The guy just doesn't play. And I guess when you have Vassy, you feel good. And we'll see down the stretch what transpires when it comes to Tampa once they clinch a playoff spot. But I tell you, Producer Bobby, that's probably the one team – I wouldn't want to play right now in the Eastern Conference because they have the big cat, Andre Vasilevsky. How do you feel about the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning? Not only the big cat, take a look at the uh, the roster, right? I know yeah. they've had somewhat mediocre team, but since they've gotten Dumba and since they acquired um, Duclair, Duclair, right? Yeah. I just think that stabilized everyone's position, line position. Vasilevsky, we know what he does in the playoffs. That's a team I don't want to play. I, I mean, you can look. You could look at these uh, these wild card teams, right? And he's like, I don't mind playing that team. I don't mind playing that team. But you got to run into Tampa. No good. They're seasoned. Um, I think it's important to stress too, Anna, the Sergachev injury. I, I think the depth of the back end could catch up to Tampa. But like what Bob just said, they got some gamers. They got some guys who have played some games in the playoffs. Stamkos, Kucherov's having a hard esque type season. Braden Point, uh, Pete just talked about that uh, Jersey Mike's draft we did. I, I got Braden Point really late. Guys back to 40 goals. Like, it's ho-hum, same convo. Uh, Victor Hedman's been great. There's just so many weapons on that roster. And I think in general, that Atlantic division, like, intrigues me. Like, even Toronto. So we can translate that into a conversation about Mitch Marner. Expected to come back on Saturday in Montreal against the Canadians. He's missed 12 games. And... There's also that convo that he might not be on the line with with Matthews, his customary spot, because uh, I, for one, and we brought this up the last couple weeks in terms of some streamer looks, uh, the Domi-Matthews-Bertuzzi line has looked really good lately for the Leafs, Anna. They have. And, you know, I like that they're trying things out because with Toronto, they've kind of run the same game plan year after year. It hasn't panned out for them. And that top line right now with Austin Matthews, it's looking pretty decent. There was a period of time this year where we were like, is Tyler Bertuzzi really a good player, the same old Tyler Bertuzzi he was, and he was a little bit slow, but now you're seeing with the right lineup placement, he's a guy who's impressed me pretty much on a nightly basis. He has goals like every other game right now, goals in three of his past five games. Max Domi's looking good. And what we said kind of about Vegas earlier, having William Carlson on that third line, spreading the wealth is not a bad thing. You want to spread the wealth throughout your lineup, and Toronto has the opportunity to do that because that line has clicked. Pete, we're just uh, discussing uh, the Maple Leafs and uh, the uh, pending return of Mitch Marner potentially on Saturday. How do you view him? Let me apologize for Peter first. You know, the weather on the East Coast, awful, <laughs> raining, wind. I mean, he got knocked out with the uh, with the Internet. So we're, we're, we're putting this together. We got Nicholas's uh, alarm going off. We got Bender having some some tech issues. I'm the only reliable person on this podcast, which is rare. Which is, yeah, which is the which is very rare. And Petey's battling. So go ahead, Petey. No, I appreciate the patience, everybody. I yeah, I like the Bertuzzi wrinkle. Marner's gonna make them deeper. To me, like my concern with the Maple Leafs rest with the goaltending. Sam Sonov all of a sudden is super hot. Seven one and one. <laughs> since the return of Joseph Wall. So maybe that has lit a fire under him, but Wall's three and five since coming back. And that gives me a concern because I don't think we can trust Sammy in the playoffs, right? Based on past seasons. 
Who can you trust, though? That is the question. I mean, I think it's de facto. You look back at Vegas, they won with Aiden Hill last year. But I think, you yeah. know, even from a fantasy standpoint, uh, I think you have to be cognizant. It's it's going to be turbulent for young goalies. Like, I understand Joseph Wool's 25, coming off a pretty serious injury. Uh, obviously, I have a beat on what's going on in Leafs Nation. The fans already turning on Joseph Wall because he's been, um, you know, pedestrian, mediocre in, in eight, out, eight outings since coming back from a high ankle sprain. That's a tough injury. Uh, to come back from, but uh, you can't deny, Anna, what Pete's saying about the goaltending, although that really hasn't been the story in the last five to seven years of the postseason for the Maple Leafs. It's usually their power play runs dry, their big boys can't get the job done, and the depth scoring is nowhere to be found. It really hasn't been about the goaltending lately in the postseason. That's what that's what's always worried me, though, because I feel yeah. like the Leafs have had opportunity year after year, at least in the regular season, to equip their team to have a solid guy in their back end. Everyone plays better if you know that you have a goalie mm-hmm. who can hold down the fort. And Toronto just has not done that. Samsonov, I don't have faith when we're heading into the postseason. I don't know if he's that guy, but a goalie I do want to bring up since we're talking about it now, and I feel like we haven't mentioned him at all, is Frederick Anderson, guys. Like, he has been unreal since returning for the Carolina Hurricanes. He's got seven straight wins, literally shut out, like, 9-7-0 save percentage, 9-3-8 save percentage, 9-3-8 save percentage. And he's one of those guys who, if you stashed him, you were waiting for him to come back into this lineup, you're probably pretty thrilled. And he might be one of my favorite goaltending options heading into the postseason. Nobody's happier than me to see that for (laughs) Freddie to be healthy and thriving right now, pretty much undefeated since coming back. Right, guys? I mean, I got to talk to the Canes, right? If they if they win the cup, I got to be down there near the ice (laughs) waving the Danish flag for Freddie if he's the, the clinching goalie. He's he's had some battles through the years on the ice, of course. Uh, But I'm really confident in him with that healthy lineup around him with Gensel and Svechnikov and that deep defense and everything like that. Selfishly, I want you to go experience Winnipeg. Why don't you go hang out with Nikolai Ehlers, another great Dane uh, in Winnipeg? (laughs) Maybe that's the look. But yeah, uh, Carolina, again, similar to Dallas. They're like the Dallas of the Eastern Conference where it's like we're not nobody's going to talk about them. They're insanely good. Uh, They made some really good pickups at the deadline. Gensel's fit in well. Uh, Kuznetsov hasn't produced the way he did after the deadline, but still he brings you another uh, depth piece, another add, another guy who could be sort of a focal point of that offense. And, and, and similar to Toronto, that's been the story with Carolina. Power play runs dry, the offense runs dry, and they can't stay healthy in the crease. A lot of ifs with this team. Uh, I think you guys can't deny that. But if, if Anderson can stay healthy, if they can keep Kochekov in the mix, I, I think Carolina's got a really, really big shot this year, guys. I love how you say no one talks about them when I'm pretty sure I've mentioned the Carolina Hurricanes on every single episode of this podcast I've ever been on because that team deserves it. And another player I got to give a shout out to specifically in keeper leagues, Seth Jarvis, guys, like great shot volume. He's had goals in back-to-back games. He's one goal away from being a 30-goal scorer, and this kid is 22. So you're looking at players like that too, looking ahead to the future when that time of the year, once again, Seth Jarvis is a key piece for me in my keeper leagues. I always have to go back and like hockey DB him and make sure the guy's not like 40 years old. He, you know, I just <laughs> got that feel to him. <laughs> I was actually looking at the rankings because I did like one final update for our top 200. So if you're in the fantasy playoffs, check it out on NHL.com slash fantasy. But yeah, Seth Jarvis season long rank was like 42 overall. So he's got to be one of the biggest low key steals in all of fantasy this year. I agree, Anna. He was uh, on our bounce back list going into the season after uh, last year. just wasn't great for him. And uh, Pete, this comes uh, by way of Luke, uh, delivered by our good friends over at Skip. Uh, I've been waiting for this. I'm happy your internet didn't break out for this conversation. (laughs) Eric Carlson, we've got to have this TED Talk on this podcast, man. (laughs) I was on with Boomer Gordon on NHL Network Radio the other day. He posed the question. It was like out of sight, out of mind. I stayed away from Carlson. Didn't want to draft this guy. Don't believe in Kyle Dubas. I think Pittsburgh's a bunch of frauds, but 75 games to Eric Carlson, nine goals, 38 assists, 47 points, average draft position, 38.6. So Pete, the question du jour via Instagram, where do you rank Eric Carlson next season? I mean, that's really hard to answer right now. <laughs> Who knows? We if don't even, even mention on... his name. We don't even mention the guy's freaking name. How about that? Because I'm a... sick of Eric Carlson, you know, <laughs> content from way back in August. All right. Yeah. We don't no, even you... mention his name, Nick. 
you called that one, Bobby. You were saying like enough with this guy, but yeah, I mean that's like a Jonathan Huberdo drop, right? Yes. We gave yeah. Huberdo hell for all those you know drops in statistical categories. I mean, let's be fair here. It's a massive drop when you're a hundred point defenseman down to forty seven. And your team, the Penguins, that was loaded, but too many cooks in the kitchen, like we mentioned, would be a concern. I mean, Latang hasn't had a great year, and neither has Carlson. So where do I rank him right now? I'd rather have like a Seth Jones. I might even rather have, you know, someone lower down, like a Sean Walker from from Colorado or a Jamie Drysdale came back the other day and had an assist in four shots. I mean, who's producing for me now? It's not Carlson. The fact that we said this right now, guys, and Pittsburgh is only three spots out of the uh, three right. points out of the second wild card spot. Watch them go on a tear immediately after. We're no, saying they're no, a bunch of frauds. No. We're saying Eric Carlson is done. <laughs> they're three points out of the second Anna, wild card we've had spot. This Nick. Buffalo, New Jersey conversation for they're a done. month, and they're still missing the playoffs. I'm sorry to break it to you. Okay. It doesn't matter if they get in or not. Eric Carlson <laughs> is. I don't want to talk. I'd rather have Matt Martin on the team, Nick, than, than Eric Carlson. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, no, I just I, I thought it was it, you, again, I didn't really think about it. it wasn't really, you know, in my mindset. And then I looked at the numbers. I was like, wow, like, yeah, it's been that type of year for Pittsburgh. And I, I you know, to, I, I'm just being sarcastic. Obviously, a team that has Sidney Crosby. I mean, you've got to believe in them a bit. Um, I think the way Crosby's played this year, I mean, definitely not showing age. I just think they're slow and I don't know about their goaltending and at the very least, Pete, I will say I'm happy. There's actually some storylines, some narratives down the stretch. I want to see some races. So uh, good for Pittsburgh. It seems like nobody wants these playoff spots, and John Tortorella has been doing his thing as well. Great to see. I'll be honest. I'm looking forward to some of these neck-and-neck -neck games the next couple of days. You know, Buffalo-Philly on Friday, and Pittsburgh at Washington on Thursday. Tom Wilson coming back from the suspension, Ooh. Anna. That's a great Carter Verhage replacement you know, him or Bertuzzi, someone like that. Connor Garland from the Canucks has been really hot. Wanted to mention him as an external replacement points in 10 of his past 12 games. But uh, yeah, I guess let me know if you guys are noticing any other trends like of guys to pick up for the latter end of this important week in the fantasy playoffs. I think for me, the teams are sticking out right now, and it's like getting those players from a certain handful of teams in the Eastern Conference that are very much in the mix for that last wild card spot, guys. Like Philadelphia, Washington, Detroit, New York Islanders, the Pittsburgh Penguins, maybe even the Buffalo Sabres. At this point, like all of those guys, you never know who's going to pop off because it's really anyone's spot to have. It's I've never seen, <laughs> at least, I can't remember the last time I saw this many teams still very much in the mix to make the postseason this late in the year yeah it's like that sorority that nobody wants to be in but they, they all find themselves uh, in the conversation to be there like that's how I feel like it's just like I've been watching Buffalo Sabres games lately like I don't know what's going on Pete to answer your question JJ Paterka I'm all about this guy right now I, I, I think health is a big story like you talk about bounce back candidates next year even talking about New Jersey it seems like a distant memory where Jack Hughes was the guy who was going to win the Hart Trophy. It was three points per game. The guy's playing wing. There's no doubt in my mind it is just speculation. There's no way Jack Hughes is healthy. There's been no way that Tate Thompson has been healthy throughout this season. That being said, Thompson has looked unbelievable as of late. Back to his old self, shooting the puck like crazy. A lot of chemistry with Paterka. By the way, this isn't me rallying aboard the Buffalo Sabres Express. They're still missing the playoffs next year. It's going to be 14 in a row. I do not believe in that franchise or that organization. Uh, but great to see from a fantasy standpoint, nevertheless, guys. I'm positive today. I also like Victor Arvidsson. Big win for the Kings. He had two assists, one on the power play. Uh, the guy's got 34 shots and eight points in 11 games this season. When he's healthy, he's a lineup block across the board. So, I haven't been fully confident in L.A. in recent weeks and months, but I feel a lot better about that squad when Arvidsson's in the lineup. Yeah, we're, we're having conversations in L.A. about can they be that sleeper team? Can they do what they did a decade ago? And certainly I think you can make that case. It's been a very roller coaster type season where the first two and a half months they're the team to beat and they're Bob Bender's Stanley Cup favorite. And, and then the coach gets fired. They lose every game. They can't make a save. Now we're back uh, the other way, Bobby. If you listen to the action <laughs> NHL collaboration with Michael Leboff, the Kings are a team there yes. in the West that you know can get hot and, and maybe win a couple rounds and find themselves in the Western Conference Final, and then all of a sudden 
you know, they're they're one series away to get in the Stanley Cup final. But yes, I mean, that is correct, Nick. One day uh, you're hot on a team, a couple weeks later you're not. It's just the uh, it's the beauty of the NHL, Anna. This isn't this isn't like we're watching the NFL here. This is the NHL. I know you're a big NFL fan. Uh, I, I don't know if I am right now. It's been a traumatic week for the city of Buffalo, <laughs> both in hockey and in football. So I would rather not talk about the NFL. But the team that best describes that, too, that I really wanted to bring up was the Nashville Predators. Like they went on yeah. that insane run. And all of a sudden now Nashville is just barely above L.A. in that first wild card spot. It could easily flip flop. They've lost three in a row. So heading into the postseason, Nick, like what's your take on that team? Are you still buying in or are you done? Um, good question. I, I probably wouldn't fade them. I, I think they're a different looking team. There's this massive perception about the Preds that they can't score, but Andrew Burnett, that's what he's known for is that offense and any team with a good goalie, I'm scared, uh, you know, when it comes to a playoff matchup and they have UC Saros and they have Roman Yossi. Love the way Victor Hedman supported Roman Yossi for the Norris Trophy. It's not going to happen. I've been saying that for a month and a half. It's going to go to Quinn Hughes, obviously a big, you know, conversation uh, in Canada. You know, Hughes is going to get it or McCarr, but it's going to be Hughes. And Yossi's getting his praise. But I, I think you look at the Predators, they're going to be a scary team because they're going to be the underdog. And I love that role in the Stanley Cup playoffs. I think there's actually a lot of value in Nashville. Uh, moving forward, tying up loose ends. Anything we like over the weekend on Thursday, guys, I, I can lead off here. Um, Nathan McKinnon, the Art Ross Trophy race. Uh, I know I was on McDavid to get over a point and a half against Dallas. Well, that didn't happen. I'm going to go back to that well. Give me McKinnon over a point and a half against the uh, Minnesota Wild. And Pete, as you noted, there's some big games in terms of the standings uh, this weekend and tonight as well. Right, and if you don't like the number on some of those McDavid props, like just tap into Bouchard. Bouchard, <laughs> I was mentioning to Anna, is the best defenseman in standard fantasy leagues this season, ahead of Kale McCarr, ahead of Quinn Hughes, ahead of the great Roman Yossi. So uh, that's not surprising to me. I was high on him in the preseason, but yeah. like whatever the number is for multi-point game or shots on goal or power play points, it's probably a little longer for Bouchard across the board compared to McDavid. I can personally guarantee that there is no one who appreciates Evan Bouchard than Pete Jensen. He is the guy who has been talking about him from the preseason all the way through the entire year. And he's right. He's honestly right. The numbers don't lie. Proud of Oakville, Ontario. Do not forget that as well when it comes to Evan Bouchard. Uh, the other game I'm looking at playing the numbers, Nashville, St. Louis, over, over, five and a half in that game. We're all expecting goaltending. I'm going the contrary. Got to mention, too, Pete, I know I brought up on Monday uh, Jimmy Snuggerud. Unfortunately, going back to Minnesota for his junior season, so we'll have to wait till next season for you to pronounce that last name on the show. Yeah, we will talk about guys like that in the upcoming Keeper Dynasty League episode probably sometime next week. We'll get a guest on for that, uh, one of the good friends in the industry that uh, – that covers that type of stuff, but always looking forward to that episode as we spin things forward to next season and fantasy. And then also, you know, just looking at some of these matchups later in the week. I was curious. I saw a fan question delivered by Skip. Uh, Ivan Fedatov, you can chuckle at the pronunciation if you want. Yeah, but if, I mean, he came in, he made his debut. Last time we did a show, we weren't sure if he was even going to play this year. 19 saves on 21 shots faced in relief in the overtime loss to the Islanders. If he starts on Friday at Buffalo, are you starting or sitting, Anna? I I'll take a flyer on him. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> there <laughs> that was good. All right. That was all we time, have guys. Jump the shark. Show's we have over. jumped the shark. <laughs> yeah, the, that was the regular the regular season finale of <laughs> NHL Fantasy on Ice. I hope everyone I hope the advice that Peter, Anna, <laughs> Nick and our guests have provided it's given you a, a championship to hoist over your head. And right, Pete, we like we like the folks who win the title to send send us along the uh, the proof, if you will, right? Yeah, and big thanks to everybody who's been hopping on the show all year long. Matt Larkin, Jay Kahn, Chris Meany, right? All our, our buddies in the industry. I know I was talking to Jake. He's really hoping that Val Nachuskin re-enters in the lineup for that big game on Friday. Sounds like that could happen. So rooting for that on Jake's uh, behalf for sure. And we're sending out a bat signal because we haven't seen him all year long. James Harding, where are you? We need a life update before the Masters. Maybe we figure something out. I mean, call me. Let's meet at Big Daddy's for a meal or something. Where have you been, buddy? All right, put a bow on it. 
All right. Well, I'm happy we had this uh, Ivan Fedotov conversation. We need like a Pete Jensen all fantasy team because uh, it would be very, very Russian. Yes, we will. <laughs> we'll do that. All right. We'll uh, tie a bow on this thing back next week. There's a lot to discuss, folks. Don't forget the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, as we have this combo 16 days away from getting underway. Thank you to producer Bob Bennett for Pete Jensen. And Anna Dua, I'm Nick Alberga. You've been listening to NHL Fantasy on Ice Delivered by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL.